Hi there, it's Mark Sebastian, founder of OptionPit.com, and I'm ex gonna explain to you how you can build a real basic red-green traffic light for the market. And it all starts with taking the terror out of the fear gauge. Uh, but before that, hey, next Wednesday, I have a webinar coming up. Uh, it's gonna be my Christmas gift to you. I'm gonna go through my secret Santa Claus strategy. And you know it's awesome because I alliterated it. So let's, uh, let's talk about the VIX. What is the VIX? The VIX is the fear gauge. Everybody here talks about the fear gauge. And if you look at a chart, when it's higher, generally speaking, if I go to the S&P 500, it, it, the SPX is selling off, it's moving around, it's volatile, it's shaky, it's scary. VIX high, S&P low, or you know, on its lows, or moving around a lot. So, um, but, but that's more reactionary. That's the VIX just kind of being a, a reaction. So without getting too deep into the VIX futures and, and how they work, we're gonna talk about the VIX futures. And the one thing you need to know is the VIX futures try to be predictive. They try to guess where the VIX is going. And generally speaking, they're always wrong. And most of the time, VIX futures are too expensive. People, if you think about insurance, people pay too much for insurance. Why? Because the one time they need it, it's a lot of money that they're using it for. Um, so VIX futures tend to be more expensive. So when VIX futures are expensive, that means the S&P is not calling in insurance policies all as well. Think about a home ins homeowner's policy, right? When you pay your homeowner's insurance every month and you don't use it, when you don't use it, are you happy or sad? Well, you're a little annoyed that you paid all this into the home insurance policy, but let's be, let's be frank here. I'd much rather not pay a bunch of, uh, pay my homeowner's insurance than have to uh, do my roof because it got blown off in a, in a bad storm, right? Or uh, redo my, the inside of my house because there was a fire. When we use insurance, we're not happy. Uh, <laughs> notably, life insurance is the one we like to use the least. Um, unless you really, really don't like the person who you're collecting from, which uh, generally speaking isn't the case because you wouldn't be a policy uh, recipient. But let's not go delve too deep. When insurance is expensive, the market tends to go up. So this curve that you're looking at right here is a bit of a contango. It's a little bit off, but it's basically a contango. Let me show you what a real contango looks like. This is from Friday. From Friday, the S&P was just off its all-time high. The VIX closed around 1360, and the futures were all at a premium. And what's more, and more importantly, all the futures themselves were trading at a premium the further back you go. This is the key. December is below January, January is below February, February below, February below March, March below uh, April, and so on. When the futures get progressively more expensive with time, that's called a contango. When we're in a contango, the market is more likely to go up than down. It's not gonna go up, it's not gonna go up every day, but if we stay in a contango for a year, from when I start looking at the S&P 500 to the end of that year, the S&P 500 will be higher. So when the VIX is in a contango, that is the backbone of a green light. Now my green light, red light, green light, is a little more complex than, than just that, but it, it's basic bones, right? It, it's spine is this formation. When we're in a contango, the S&P is more likely to go up. Now, let's go back to the end of September of 2019. And I want you to notice what happens here. Here we are on the 30th. Look what's starting to happen on October 1st. And here we are on October 2nd. And the key thing to notice, watch the second month out starting around the 23rd, starts to get above the third month out. And it kind of stays there. So this is telling me, hey, guess what? 
there's some things to worry about. Now the VIX gets above that front month future. Now the whole curve is flattened. So if I'm just using a red light green signal, green being I'm law on the market, red being I'm in cash. When I start to see this back month, these months no longer have that beautiful one month is lower than the next month is lower than the next month is lower than the next month or more, you know, front month is, is lower than the next month. Next month is higher than front month. When I don't see that basic formation, that's telling me something is up and I should go hedge or go to cash or take money off the table. That's my red light. So there you have it. The real basics of building a red light, green light strategy all are based on the bones of VIX futures. All right, folks, I hope you have a great day, a great week, and I will talk to you soon.